So, welcome everyone. Hi, Hello. Rafael. How are you Hi, doing? Michael. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Fine, fine. Uh, so, welcome to this new webinar, everyone. It's 12, uh, 12 o'clock here in Europe. Today we are talking about uh, Arduino, right? Right, mm -hmm. Arduino PLC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's the next version. Before we were working on Arduino, the small boards, and now it's the PLC in the market. Yeah. So it was, uh, I think it was like two months ago, we purchased this uh, little guy here. Let's see, we can see it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Uh, I have to say that it took me a few days uh, fighting <laughs> with it, <laughs> and I didn't get right. very far with it, but then you took over <laughs> some weeks ago and you, you made it work, right? Yeah, it's not so easy to work with it when you are not experienced with the Arduino before because it has two interfaces. One is the sketch and one is a BLC program, and they're not the same. So yeah. we will see how it goes when we start yeah. today. Yeah, it's kind of a challenge, but uh, and actually we are taking some risks today, as usual, <laughs> <laughs> doing this uh, webinar live. Uh, we hope yeah. everything will move smoothly but uh right uh, yeah it's, it's some steps not very clear how it works but uh, we think we have it uh, con we'll under out. control yeah uh, so yeah. so what we are going to see today let me see if i can start this video so yeah. basically what we are going to do maybe you can explain it uh, yeah right so we have this test bench where you can see some conveyors some linear guys and buttons so it's like our digital twin, twin platform we created on Simomatic. So we are going to simulate the system using Arduino PLC code. So you can see on the split screen on the left, you have Arduino PLC editor, which is in the run mode right now. And you can see some values are flickering. So these values are coming from the digital twin environment. For example, the status of conveyor, the status of tower light, and the object counting on the conveyor. So we're going to just control the system using our Arduino code. This is what we're going to see. Yeah. And the interesting part is the interface between these two is via Modbus TCP IP. Yeah. So we're going to see how we can configure the addresses and connect these together to make it work. Yeah. Maybe in the future, we we will see other interfaces, like maybe OPC UR coming. I prob we probably yeah. will see it sometime. I don't think it's yeah. still available. Uh, that's why Not we yet, went for Modbus. Mm -hmm. uh, right. But yeah, so... We will be using Simomatic, one public system that we will show soon mm -hmm. and make the connection. And then you will uh, guide us through the code right. and so on, just to see different options and so on. We, we are not digging right. quite uh, a lot in all the features of the mm -hmm. Arduino PLC, but just showing how to connect and uh, these kind right. of things. Yeah. Okay, so okay. Uh, I think we can uh, go ahead. Uh, we will uh, start. Uh, showing the mm -hmm. Arduino Opta. I mean, mm -hmm. we can tell what can we say about this guy. Uh, it has. I say you can see it on the screen. Yeah. Can, people can see if the yeah. bigger bigger photo. Yeah. Yeah, we have eight digital inputs, four digital outputs, mm -hmm. right? Relay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, we have outputs. a push button. Uh, the user, mm -hmm. the user push button, and then we have some LEDs we can program as well. It has right. an Ethernet port. I think we can see it uh, under, and then USB C. Right. Yeah, something cool. Right. Something cool was that uh, you can just connect it to the computer, and it it power up directly from the right. computer USB uh, That's port. True. Yeah. So basically, what we are going to do, I'm gonna take this Ethernet cable. I'm gonna connect it to the Arduino. We are gonna mm -hmm. connect it to the USB C. Cable meanwhile, on. would you like to sh yeah. meanwhile would you like to share how did you get to know Arduino PLC? Did you just find yeah. it on the internet or how was it? I I think it was a new in LinkedIn. I think. Oh, it's yeah. on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. What well, What about you? Because I I got it from you. I mean, when okay. you told me that you have a new PLC. <laughs> yeah. <in the> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think we so were discussing about good. that in the office, and uh, yeah. I, I just check. I think we found a few of us uh, found that new, okay. and then I check, and I was pretty quick okay. purchasing it. So I know okay. now. I know now it's pretty difficult mm. to get it's one. It's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I tried it. I think last week it was out of stock. Maybe yeah. it's back then. I don't know. We will see. Yeah. But it's a good PLC to start learning yeah. for students because I think the software is free. You can download yeah. and just program yeah. the PLC. Cool. Yeah, so basically step one, we're just going to open the virtual model in Simomatic, explain 
a little right. bit uh, how it, mm -hmm. it looks. Uh, then we will do uh, some configuration for the inputs and outputs. Maybe we need to explain why we will set up some parameters yeah. in uh, in uh, in Simumatic. Then we right. then we download the project to the uh, from Arduino PLC okay. ID to to the Arduino. Mm -hmm. Uh, we make sure it runs and uh, we will do then a quick check that everything is up right. and running and then you will guide us through the okay. through the code okay it sounds good okay yeah cool okay so i think i'm gonna uh, start sharing the screen uh, let's okay sh yeah sh do you do you see my screen yeah yeah, yeah i see your screen yeah okay. so uh, I just jump in into the simulatic environment. As you mm -hmm. say, we will be playing around with the... We have a generic system. Yeah, yeah we have a generic system. It's called a rack, a generic uh, uh, yeah. simulatic PLC rack test station. Okay, so this, I think we have used it in the last webinars as well. Yeah. To... And this is a public system. Anybody can just load and use yeah. it right away. Yeah, so just go to the public, search for rack, and you will find it. And... and uh, Basically, here uh, we have uh, we have some push buttons. We have a conveyor. We have this linear ax mm -hmm. axis, and mm -hmm. you have already done so with in the PLC program. That with the wiring, yeah. right? So, with uh, depending what uh, which buttons you press, the, this will be moving yeah. around. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the wiring is already done. Yeah. Uh, if somebody want to see, they can go to two D view. It's a much better way to see the wiring. Otherwise, yeah. you can only yeah. in three. So this is the 2D view. But uh, basically mm -hmm. here, uh, what we need to uh, set up will be this, uh, the PLC. Right. Yeah, I'm going to hide maybe the box so we can see the mm -hmm. PLC here. Yeah. Uh, so we see it there and we have a CPU, we have a, mm -hmm. a digital input card, digital output card, and right. two, in, and two in analog, analog input, input and output cards. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, that said, uh, the default setup for this system mm -hmm. is using the OPC UI driver. So right. we know that we will be using Modbus TCP, Modbus. right? And we right. will need to do some setup here. I think we can come back right. to this later. We can when come we back to this up. one once we set up Arduino, right? Yeah. And of course, because it's Modbus, we will need to set up the right register numbers instead of variables right. in all the input and right. output cards. Okay, so we have the input and, right. uh, input and output analog cards and then the digital input and output. So right. we will need to change something here, but let's come back to that mm -hmm. later, okay? Okay. So I would recommend that I created a project for you, which you mm -hmm. can open, and then we can directly jump into what is the different parameters in this yeah. project. Maybe before we start with this, we can mention that uh, you need to have installed both the Arduino, right. Arduino ID, yes. ID and this Arduino PLC ID, okay? Because you need to install right. some libraries. Um, right. And just to tell the audience, uh, right. there is a, there is a, if you go to the board manager or to the library manager in Arduino IDE, uh, just search for Opta mm -hmm. and you will find this uh, library that you need to install, okay? Right. We have the latest version installed. You see that there are two previous versions. But mm -hmm. uh, we need to have this 401 or two installed. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Uh, maybe we can go to full screen, uh, Rosbir. You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can be better. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So, uh, yeah. So that said, we can, uh, we can. Should I add there? Maybe I can add the cameras. As, as, yeah, we can put the cameras. Uh, as long as they better. don't, uh, <laughs> are they don't, Covered they don't, there, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, this okay. is the project you sent me. So yeah, tell us, tell us what you figure out. All right. Yeah. So step one was we have to install a library, which we already did. Mm -hmm. So if you are doing for the first time, you have to install the library in the IDE. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, when you open the project, you can see on the left side, there is a tree, which is called resources. Yep. And the important part is if you see in the bottom, it says resources and project. You see on the bottom of this? Yep. So when you go to project, there, there is where you write your PLC code. Mm -hmm. And when you go to resources at the bottom, that's where you write the sketch. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we have to tell our PLC code about different variables we're going to define in the sketch. 
For example, we talked about we're going to do Modbus communication between Simomatic and our unit PNC. Okay. The Modbus variable will be defined in the sketch. So here you can see that in resources. So you have status variables. And you can see on the top, it's volatile. Okay. And if you go to parameters on the top, it's non-volatile. Yep. So we're going to use the parameters or variables which are volatile because we're going to change the values. Yep. And here you can see you can define the variables. So if you click on add, you will have an option to define your addresses or variables, yep. whatever you want to do. Yep. And these variables for the Modbus for rewrite operation, basically it's holding registers. And yep. that starts from register 6000. If yep. I hope they can see in the in the yep. top 6000. Yep. And the first address in uh, in Arduino is 24576, yep. yep. which represent the decimal of, of, of this hexadecimal address. So I define three variables. One is Modbus input, Modbus output, and analog input 02. Yep. I will explain you what is that. Modbus inputs means the inputs which are in the simulmatic. Yep. Like input card, buttons, yeah. These, the, the 16 yeah, input, input card, 16 bit in simulmatic. Yep. These uh, push buttons and the sensors, they are going to the input card in simulmatic. And then this address, which you see here, 24576, this should be linked to that input card in some amount. That's yeah. why I have to define it here. Yeah. Similarly, you have defined three addresses. Yeah. Maybe you can delete now the test. Maybe yeah. you don't need to use it. I just want I just wanted to say that when you add a new variable, if you compile, yeah. maybe we can show how this uh, connects right. connect to these shared variables, because uh, mm -hmm. what you mentioned is that automatically when you create these yes. resource status variables, the mm -hmm. shared variables in the PLC side get addressed, as you say, yeah. to the specific right. memory. Okay, but this right. seems to happen automatically. Okay, when you, you compile, mm -hmm. and now in, when mm -hmm. if I compile, uh, uh, where were we uh, here? Yeah, if I compile mm -hmm. automatically, we will see yeah, that the test variable has been created. Sorry, uh, right. I, go, mm -hmm. I need to go back here, and it has been assigned on a specific right. address. Yeah. address mm -hmm. so so yeah right so our first uh, task was to define the variables now it is possible that you can also use arduino real inputs and outputs because it is possible because it has on the plc digital ios but because we are working with semomatic we don't deal with uh, the inputs mm -hmm. which you see here programmable inputs relay outputs led outputs you can also use that but yeah. we are not using it because we don't need it in this project mm -hmm. So in the sketch, we deal with variables for iOS. Mm -hmm. And then if you open the sketch on yep. the bottom, so here you will by default see this code, but this will be commented. So I've just yep. removed the comments. So what are we doing here? We are just defining the IP address of our Arduino PLC. Mm -hmm. So here you can see we have uh, on the line number 12, IP address 192.168.1.151. That's the IP address we want to set in the Arduino. So you, if you see it for the first time, it will be commented. You can remove the comments, and then you can define which IP address you can use based on your network configuration. That's it. That's yep. all you have to do yep. in the sketch to define the IP address. Yeah. So with these two things, basically activating the Ethernet communication, the Ethernet port with right. the specific IP address, and mm -hmm. setting up these registers for the Modbus or enabling mm -hmm. them, Basically, yeah. you sh we should be able to communicate with Simomatic and read and write, right? Right. right. So uh, we are not going through the program yet, Dan. Let's, let's, yet. let's go we to the resources to and show show right. the audience how to download All right. and reset. Because there is there All is right. one tricky thing that uh, you need to do in the very yes. beginning. And it's this, True. this uh, manual sketch download and the first yeah. initialization, okay? Right. In this case, the Arduino is already initialized, but we are going to do it anyway. So mm -hmm. you need to take a pen and then cl double click in the reset icon. I don't know if right. you, you, you see. can show it. Yeah, but I can see your mouse. Yeah, you can see my mouse here. Yes, I can yeah, see your mouse. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, ah, no, sorry, here. You see my mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. <laughs> so you need to click twice. Okay, no, right. don't hold two seconds. Click twice, right. and then you will hear, or you, usually the USB port will um, activate, be activate or sound, mm -hmm. yeah. And if yeah. you come back, you will see that it will show two ports. And in mm -hmm. this case, we know that port or COM4 is the one that mm -hmm. Arduino is taking. 
Right. So once there, you see the green light as here, mm -hmm. as in the picture, lighting in the Arduino, and now you can do the download, right? Uh, right. So if we do that, it will say it may take some minutes, and mm -hmm. hopefully once we have downloaded the, the sketch, then we can right. connect and we will show, uh, Rajbir, you will how guide me, code. how to yeah. connect mm -hmm. and right. how to get online with the PLC, download the program and all this stuff, okay? Right. It seems to be two different steps. We, I don't, I yet, I don't have it very clear yet what's going on under the hood, <laughs> but uh, we are downloading the sketch right. so far, yeah. And it takes some so some seconds. It takes some time, yeah. I think it's the same time it takes when we are working on the Arduino as well. Hmm. So we have to bear with that. So this is the startup procedure. Everybody has to do only once, yep. so you don't have to do it every time. So once you do this once, you just have to write the code and then download the code, which yep. you're gonna see in a few, yep. few minutes. So now it actually, I hear the USB again, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. blipping, and uh, the green light is gone. So now we mm -hmm. are again in a normal mode with the Arduino. Right. So now we need to okay. do set up the communication to go online, okay? Right. Actually, I don't know if we can, uh, can we Pink. ping it? I we can check. Uh, we can try, mm -hmm. try to see, because it says downloading the sketch, so. Yeah, so yeah, you can I can it. ping the Arduino. So, so mm -hmm. far we have the right. communication and so on, yep. Perfect. And now uh, the next step is how we can uh, communicate to Arduino. Mm -hmm. So we can go to online, mm -hmm. where you are right now, and yep. set up communication. Yep. So we're gonna use the Modbus, which you can see is already active. Mm -hmm. So if it's not active, you can activate that. And then you can go to properties. Mm -hmm. And in properties, you have default parameters. Yep. You just have to select your port. Yep. So in, in this our case, it's COM5. Yes, five. Yep. And now, now we have to select the address. So mm -hmm. it's a tricky part. I yeah. was struggling how to find the address. So it was by default, I think one, I'm not sure. Yeah, but you I have to so. go 247. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I found so much information on the internet because there's no <laughs> manual for that. Yeah. <laughs> So please make sure you enter 247. I hope this works for you as well. Yeah. And once you do that, your communication settings yeah. are done. Now I we can go then connect. Yeah. Let's let's try to go connect. Now yeah, you can it see says, in the bottom yeah. the status. Hmm. Connected. Yeah. So it's connected. And now the software will check if the code is inside or not. Yeah. So here it says no code. Yeah. Because the PLC code which we have in the project, it's not inside the Arduino because no. we initialized that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So next step is we have to write the PLC code. Yeah, and download and it. Maybe you can, we can just show first the PLC code in the project. Okay. Do you, or don't do you want to download and show? I was thinking that maybe we can make the connection, right. show the how we map right. the addresses in Simomatic, and then once we have, okay. we can move something. We can we can show. Okay. So right. this then... was also tricky. So as you say, the, now we just clean the Arduino. So we need to go to right. the online once connected, download the code. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So and at least we will have something, yeah. Yeah, the code which we're downloading is already created. We'll come back to that, what is the code inside. Mm -hmm. But let's understand we made a sample logic to run the conveyor and to learn the linear guides and count the objects on the conveyor. This is what we already coded. We will come back to that, how this coding has yeah. been done. So once you write your code, you download like Michael is yeah. doing and a yeah. couple of uh, affirmations. Yeah, I, I hear the USB. No, Right, again. and you can see the status on the bottom, it's downloading. Now it's downloading more stuff, internal flash. Mm -hmm. yeah. And once it's downloaded, you will see a status on the bottom, right? Source okay yeah. and connected. So this is the validation we need to check. Let's see. Now you can maybe go to connect again. Yeah. Now you can yeah. see source okay and connected. Yeah, These are the two things you need to make sure. Why does it disconnect <laughs> after downloading? <laughs> It's oh, weird. I yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, okay. they will fix it. All right. Yeah. Okay, so now, now we have it. Everything is done. Yeah, everything is mm -hmm. done. So, so we can go and open Sigmatic. Yeah. And now we need to mm -hmm. do some stuff. And that here we have another tricky part, right, Rajbi? Because we were discussing right. about some uh, registers. Uh, go back. Right. So people can see our register numbers. We have them here in the status yeah. uh, variables. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Input card, the 16 digital input card is uh, register 24576 in, in numeric mm -hmm. or decimal and right. 6000 six, 6, in hexadecimal. And then is the next two, the, the next one is the mm -hmm. digital outputs and the and 70, 78 is the 
analog input. Analog. Yeah. Right. So uh, we need to. We could say that we just can copy this number and go yeah. to Simomatic and use those registers, right? But we already know it's not that <laughs> simple. No. 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 I'm gonna hide so, myself just for a moment. Yeah, you so, can. Yeah. You can maybe. Hide. Yeah. So what you do is when you go to the PLC properties here. Yeah. So the first step is before we write the register, we have to set up the parameters. So yeah. here, now we're going to write the IP address which we yeah. entered in the sketch, right? Yeah. In your Arduino sketch. Yeah. And then next to the host, you have the port by default yeah. 5024 Modbus. Yeah. And then you have a unit ID. Yeah. And unit ID is, uh, yeah, the ID. 247. Which is defined. Yeah. It was 247. Okay. Yeah. And then you have the a special parameter which is called uh, relative addresses. Or yeah. what was this called? Use yeah. underscore relative yeah. underscore addresses. So we have two types of addressing. One is relative and one is like a typical Modbus addressing. Yeah. So here we are using relative addresses. This is because of our gateway, which we have in some yeah. Yeah. So we have to make sure you make this uh, tag true. Use yeah. relative addresses. This is important. Yeah. For, for Arduino connecting yeah. to no. for Arduino opt up here. Yeah, if you use for absolute, device, yeah. mm -hmm. if you use absolute, uh, yeah. then uh, uh, depending you the platform, to, you don't yeah. you, you just leave it. The default value is false. Yeah, yeah, or just write false. So this is the set of parameters we need to do once. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now, if you click actually, okay. actually, if I click OK and I connect, uh, we have we are running. Okay, so that means the the connection with the PLC is done. Mm -hmm. The problem is that yeah. we haven't active uh, activate. Uh, we have to define the addresses. The addresses. So now it's complaining yeah. because those are not valid register numbers. Right. Right. Now is the second so now, thing. Yeah. Second step is we go to digital input card, which uh, must be in the PLC yep, or here. on the top. Yeah. Yep. Digital input. Now we have to check which address we define in Arduino. I think it was yeah. two, four, five, five seven, six. seven, six. But here we have to enter five, seven, five because in our gateway we have addressing zero base. Yep. In Arduino we have addressing one base. So mm -hmm. if you switch from one base to zero base, you always make minus one. Yep. That's why this you can get to know if you don't know if it's zero and one, just make a hit and try yeah. and see where the values are going. And then you can find out if it's one base or zero base. So this you have to keep in mind always when you're dealing with Modbus. Some manufacturer has zero base, some has one base, yeah. so it's totally dependent. Yeah. Similarly, for the digital output card, yeah. we write two, four, five, seven, six. Six, yeah. One less than in the Arduino. Yeah, and one less than in the Arduino. And similarly for the analog input. Yeah. On, can on both, the first one yeah. we are not using. So we can write on using, and here. Yeah. Two, four, five, seven, seven. Yeah. Right. And now we have the outputs that we can clean as well. This is the trick. Yeah. If you write this is none, because we are not using yeah, it. Yeah. Then it won't it won't handle that variable. Yeah. Right. And now maybe one more thing we can check. If you go to linear drive, yep. This linear ball screw drive. Here you have to make sure analog range. You can make zero to ten volt. That's okay. the range we're gonna use for input. Okay. And rest is fine. Yeah, that's that's the way you have programmed it on yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. And now, if I click, can play. click play and see everything is fine. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, okay. there is some action. No, analog. I didn't. Input. I okay, forget something. Yeah. Uh, analog input. This one is okay. This one is okay. Oh, let's try again. I'm going to try again. Analog input. Oh, variable fail. Oh, yeah. Two, four, five, seven, seven. Let's check the Arduino again. Let's go to Arduino. Four, Maybe five, it's because seven, we seven. didn't download ah, the we PLC. Didn't download the code. Yeah, so yeah, let's, let's it seems try. that yeah. it seems like the mod bus is active or enabled, but now we realize as yeah. well because I think we didn't test this before, Rashbir. Uh, but now we right. can uh now we know that if you don't download the program in Arduino, then you will it mm -hmm. won't work. Okay. So let's let's come here and download the code. But I think we did this download. That's why it sources. Okay, I'm just checking the addresses. Yep. So now six. it's okay. Let's go back. Let's click yeah. play. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Connection fail. Two four. Oh, it doesn't. Doesn't seem to like. 
us today. Yeah. Uh, do you think we let forgot check, something? Uh, do we know? Let me check if everything is okay. Maybe check uh, the 247 modbus address. <laughs> we knew that Maybe something will, will, will happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe let's try with one thing. If you can activate modbus TCP. Okay. But it should be. Uh, let me, we'll let just me try, try to connect yeah. the gateway again. Yeah, yeah, let's see. I don't know if uh, something. Or, or I just wrote something wrong yeah, other is, this, is... it's not that the id was 255 255 i also think so for more this tcp yeah uh, let's see because maybe it's different for communicating yeah, you... yeah. yeah yep that was it <laughs> that's okay so it was the id yeah it was the so 255 ID. is the id of tcp ip i know why is for normal modbus. i know why rushbeard because when To the you hear me? Uh, you think I lost your audio? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, let me see. Right. If I just freeze the camera mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Let me check. The camera is frozen. Yeah. Oh, I don't. What I don't know okay. if is the audience can hear me. Uh, uh, let me verify that. Yeah. Yeah, they can hear you. Okay, just, something yeah. has happened. Uh, I don't know what. With your but, camera, you can hide the camera. If you want. Yeah. I'll just keep it on. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It here. Okay, I get confirmation, but uh, for some reason the okay. camera. The camera is yeah. kind of death now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> do. I'm gonna do a test. I think. Okay. No, I good. I can get it back maybe. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Okay. Cool. And this is something that right. happened before where we and were when we were person. testing. <laughs> yeah, but when we were testing, is something is going on all the time with the Arduino, which right. which makes uh, with something we are with the USB ports. Okay. Right. Uh, so where were we? Uh, yeah, we have this up and running now, right? Mm -hmm. So we okay. can yeah. we can click on the buttons, and uh, we right. see that the let me see da, 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 that is working, and we can see the PLC. Let me see, we can see mm -hmm. some variables probably. Right, right. Uh, here, and uh, let's see what we can see. If, if we, we go to watch, project on yeah, the button, yeah, mm -hmm. on the project. And the variables uh, here we had, I think you had this you can, variable. I have this uh, local variable. Local variable, uh, yeah. Uh, in the main, if you open the main on yep. the top, it will show yeah. the variable. Local variables. And th and I think here, yeah, yeah, we could we could see yeah. this, and we could see that it was uh, the counting. value was increasing. Yeah. When the, the let me see. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You see, we see it increasing right each time one box is going on so yeah with this we show that at least we get the the communication up and running and now let's <laughs> let's take a few <laughs> seconds <laughs> and uh, we can i think you can take your time now and guide me through the plc program okay all right but sure. just just summarizing we can summarize just the steps. summarizing yeah um yeah. We did uh, mention that you need to install Arduino IDE and the yeah. Arduino PLC IDE. You need to, right. if it's the first time you use the Arduino, you need to do this reset or re initialization. Initialization. Yeah, mm -hmm. clicking two times in the reset button and then doing the download. Once right. you do that, make sure you have the Modbus communication active uh, with right. the port and so on. And then we, we or you had define some modbus registers with some variables yeah, oh yeah, the yeah. Modbus register which automatically the modbus yeah which mm -hmm. automatically are connected to the plc and address right. to the plc variables yeah. and basically those register numbers are the ones that need to be used in simumatic after doing the right. rack plc setup with the right. same numbers minus one okay that will right. be the summary and right. when you do that, you are basically uh, up and running. Yeah. 
Right. So uh, I think now you can uh, now you can tell me uh, the PLC what, code. The PLC code. Yeah. Okay. What we have here. This is actually not so complicated. So if you check the main main program yep. in the PLC, yep. you have the other uh, screen up. You can minimize the cinematic screen. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Okay. So in the main code, you will see, I will open my main on my window because it's yours, it's too small for me. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, I'm writing kind of like a structured text or like SCL and Siemens PLC, yeah. this programming. Let but me this check if, you can, uh, let me check if I can do some, do you know if you can it? do some Zoom? Uh, maybe in view, but I don't no, see No, I don't see. Okay, let's, let's go ahead. Yeah, uh, control okay. plus also doesn't work. So the first few lines, you can see it's just very simple. What I'm trying to do is we are reading the mod bus value mm -hmm. in integer. Mm -hmm. So we have to convert that to word. This is necessary because in word, it's possible to do bitwise operation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, when we read the word, it has 16 bit, right? And every bit represent right. the status of your input. Mm -hmm. So in Simomatic, we have also defined a word, this mod bus register. And so it has 16 bit. So bit zero, for example, is the toggle switch. Bit one is the push button. Bit two is so on. Suppose I convert this integer into word. So that is stored in the address inputs. Mm -hmm. And this input address you can find in the global variable. So if you yep. see on the left, global yep. variables, you have this input address, right? A word. Similarly, I do it for the outputs. So you have two variable inputs and outputs, but the outputs I write in the end of the yep. main logic. Yep. So in the main logic, you have first you convert the input, and then On you that, work with these inputs, yeah. and then you store the output. So in yeah. this inputs, what I'm doing is basically you can see in the line number six and nine and twelve, I'm just yeah. taking the status of inputs, putting to the output. It's like a letter yeah. logic assignment. Yeah. And then how we are counting the boxes or the objects, we have a sensor in our somatic, and the sensor is giving us true and false signal. It's a digital sensor. Mm -hmm. But if you use the signal digital true and false directly, it will count yeah. more because of the scan time. Yeah. So we have to use the rising edge in this yeah. case. So I made a small function, very tiny function for trigger. Yeah. And there you can see we can program using FBD. Yeah. So another possibility to program the PLC. You can also do letter logic. Yeah. So just to show you a different var variants. So I used the FBD logic to make a rising trigger mm -hmm. from input dot six. Now you see inputs dot six means it's the seventh input. Starting from zero. Yeah. So this is coming from somatic, and then you get the rising edge after the function block, which is called photo sensor yeah. edge. Which is a global variable. This yeah. is a global variable. And that I, that variable I can again use in the main main logic. So you can yeah. see the line number 16. Yeah. If this edge is true, then my object count, which is a variable, is mm -hmm. equal to object count plus one. Very simple. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I have just two more outputs, six and five, to move the linear drive forward and reverse. Yep. And that's it. On the line number 27, you can see a feedback, which is coming from the analog input in the range from 0 to 65535. Five. I divide, I scale this range from 0 to 65535 five, to 0 to 100 by dividing it with 655.35. Mm. Yeah, super easy. Yeah. And then if you monitor and go to watch window, you mm. can see the feedback of the linear yep. drive. If I can you take just take it. the variable, yeah, I can take you it. can take the variable. Uh, uh, this variable you can take from uh, yeah. Yeah, just drag and drop it. In, the local yeah. in the local variable. Yeah, it was, okay. yeah. This is also fine. Yeah. And now if you move the linear drive, you can also see the feedback coming yeah. in, mm -hmm. in the simulmatic, and you can see the object counting yeah. as well. So one so, thing that which was a bit weird, I, I have mm -hmm. to say, is that when in the resources do you declare these status variables, okay? Right. The mod bus registers mm -hmm. automatically mm -hmm. here in the shared mm -hmm. in the shared right. variables. Uh, let me see right. here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. vari variables with the same name in the PLC side are created. Okay, address right. to a specific MM memory. But your right. problem your problem here was that these variables are integers and um, um, yeah. unsigned integers. But when you wanted to work in the structure test code, you wanted to address bitwise right. some of the content of these right. variables. And that's mm -hmm. why you came up with the idea of creating yeah. global variables in the PLC side that somehow mm -hmm. you map to the Modbus coming and going variables, right? 
Uh, yeah, because if you see the main logic, I use yeah. this function. This one. To word. To word on this so to I, int. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then I'm reading modbus underscore inputs. Yeah. That's the uh, modbus variable, and then I store yeah. it into inputs, yeah. and then I just use inputs and outputs. Yeah. So it's yeah, you didn't have to do that with the analog input because you are using it already as an un uh, unsigned integer. Yeah, yeah, because in analog input, I'm not using bitwise operation. Exactly. I'm just yeah. doing mathematical operation. This you can do with integer yeah. easily. Yeah, just so yeah. for the audience to understand. What I wonder, mm -hmm. Rashbir, is see what can you, can you cannot change here, right? Because this that's, one you are yeah. in global variables. Yeah, these these are created see. automatically. The question yeah. is if can you change the? You can. What happens so if I we change can. here? Yeah, I think you can still change it. Uh, because, where are you in status variable? Yeah, because now if I come right. here, status variable. Maybe if you had, you can make if you had word. made them war. Maybe mm -hmm. it will work. Try uh, that. Yeah, we can. Then I don't have to scale it. Yeah, maybe we we could we have done like this. Maybe we. All right. We will be able to compile. Right, and then you don't have to convert it later on. Yeah. Convert to int. And now we can mm -hmm. go to the main. Uh, let's see, and we could use this variable here, right. or just yeah, right here. I guess it, yeah. What it says inputs, well. we could just write this variable. Mm -hmm. And when it says mm -hmm. uh, Modbus, what we say, it says outputs, we can just write Modbus yeah. outputs. Modbus output, yeah. Uh, we can try. This This won't make much now. Yeah, we can comment we, it. We can just it. comment this, and we can comment this. Yeah. And we can see uh, what happens. That's right. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, we know, just download the code. It says actually here, there is the difference. Yeah. So Right. Yeah, pretty quick. Cool. There are no errors. Yep. That's great. Uh, and let me bring Simomatic and let's see. Well, let's check what happens when we click play. Yeah, it's running. And let's what? let's try. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, let's see if we if we ha get something counting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see we get yeah. the feedback. Oh. Yeah. But it's not a rising edge, or? Ah, it, we don't get the rising edge because we are not using the Modbus input. Yeah. So we need to oh, go. Yeah, it's in the function block. <laughs> yeah, here we need to use the Modbus uh, variable yeah, instead. So we need to use this, this right. one. Mm -hmm. So we can come here and change here the variable. Sorry. Just click on the three three dots yep. on the right. Maybe it's more, more like this as well. Yep. Yeah. So now we can try to do the download code again. Right. Yeah, we can. Let's see. If we download in uh, warm, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's counting. So we could do the warm, cool. warm uh, yeah. download, and uh, it's working. Ah, so okay. let me let me see if I can do this smaller and play a little bit with the system. So mm -hmm. yeah, try uh, to see the feedback. Yeah, I can see the feedback. I can move the. Okay, now it's in percentage, right? Zero to hundred percent. Cool. That's very nice. We can also do the scaling into centimeter if you know the length of yeah. the linear guide, which we already know in the semantics. So it's mm -hmm. just an example to show in 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we get uh, all the functionality. This is a stopping. Uh, do you know yeah. how, you, how you can uh, monitor the variables? Uh, yes, you can click on you, which variables. I mean, I mean, you can you monitor like uh, other platforms like uh, the Googles in Siemens Tia portal or going online with... Um, Code is, can you see the code actually and the variable values here in oh, uh, this? I don't know yet. You don't know this yet, possible, right? Yeah. How do we know? I just got a few hours to work on it. Yeah. You can see I, don't I mean, have one. <laughs> we know we can do this, but uh, right. I don't know if you can kind of see this online. Yeah. Maybe add to watch the individual variable, but I don't know if they can yeah, that's, show that will be like, on the main code. Yeah, yeah, I could do this and we could see the inputs and outputs. You Just drag see. and drop in. It was easy. Yeah, right. See, uh, yeah. Board. But it's not uh, making it color like green or red. No, that, that's what I was thinking. It would be nice to see no, that. Unfortunately feature, not. Yeah. yeah. Maybe in the next update it will show yeah. you. <laughs> but but so, yeah, yeah. I, you could you you basically add different programs and you just show us right. that you can code in different languages. I mean, we right. this is a complete platform. I mean, not very not mm -hmm. so complete, but basic PLC complete platform. Mm -hmm. So I think you can right. do most of the stuff you can do with a normal PLC. Yeah, 
Okay, I don't know how right. it is controlling axes and things like that, but mm. uh, basic but stuff it's good for beginners. Yeah, yeah, beginners education. I think it's a it's a nice platform. And uh, on top, if you go to Sketch, you can also write your sketch parallelly. So yeah. you can have your sketch running and PLC code running, and you can interface the data between these two. Yeah. So this is also very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we you could do, probably l l correct me if I'm wrong, but you could add the MQTT, for example. Uh, library yeah. and you could uh, yeah. you could also send data to an MQTT right. broker from here and do a da True. this kind of dashboard you, you like. <laughs> Definitely yeah. you can yeah. do this you can do in the sketch part of yeah. the Arduino. Yeah. Like all the things which you can do in Arduino, I think you can do here as well. Yeah. And yeah. it's supposed I think Modbus uh, TCP as a slave or this I have to check some master yeah. slave function it also supports and 485 serial port as well. So a lot of interfacing is possible. Yeah. So I don't know. Do we have something else to to tell, or what do you think? Uh, maybe you can show uh, if you want something about our academy, our new gateway yep. course, because yep. this part of the seminar would be present in our gateway. Yeah. So maybe so, in the in your browser you can show. Yeah. I can give me a second. I'm gonna show. Yep. Uh, so like a, if you need to know full fledged tutorial. Yep. I'm going uh, to the academy. academy. Uh, you, mm -hmm. We haven't updated the new academy address yeah. yet, but I mm -hmm. think we can mm -hmm. we can say again to the audience that we are working yeah. in this new academy. So it's just newacademy.simomati.com. Yeah. Uh, here, like, uh, this is the yeah. course you mentioned. And okay, uh, for yeah. every anyone uh, watching this webinar and who doesn't know what Simomatic is at all, we really recommend to take this getting started course. Even the system right. builder, pretty cool courses mm -hmm. that do not take that much time. Uh, the same, the same login uh, or credentials are yeah. used for the platform and the and the academy. Right. And this is the course you are working. Uh, yeah. So here you can see the green part, which is already done, and I'm working on CCW mm -hmm. Micro 800 simulation, and we are bringing all the video tutorials for mm -hmm. different PLC. Yeah. The more Arduino Opta is also there. I mean, all of those or most of those are already existing in the old academy. Yeah. It's just old that we academy, are porting yeah. porting this content mm -hmm. to the to the new academy, and yeah. we have uh, PLCs, robots, and other yeah. stuff. I mean, even Python, yeah. Arduino, and so on. So Arduino PLC right. will be here somewhere soon. On the yeah. top, you can see. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, see it. Arduino yeah, Opta. I can see it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so very glad I did it. <laughs> Yeah, so this will be added here. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to do a little bit more fine tuning in the video, and then we will add this uh, webinar here. Yeah, cool. So, right. so this was. Yeah, that, that was all. So, oh, what yeah. do you think we're gonna do in the next webinar? Do you have some ideas? Yeah, I don't know. We we mentioned the, this about the vision systems, playing a little bit with cameras and so on. It's a it's okay. still a beta feature, but I think we can play a little bit with lights. Mm -hmm. Cameras, maybe. What, what is this vision? Can you tell me more about? Yeah. It? How do you do so, it? Yeah. so we have a feature. I can show you now. Uh, we have a feature here mm -hmm. that is called camera views. Uh, okay. It's it's meant to be used so you can place the camera in different positions. Let's say you want to have the camera okay. here just to see uh, your okay. your system up and running. Then you can come here and mm -hmm. save a camera. Uh, okay. View here. And then mm -hmm. let's say you want to jump quickly between between that position and uh, right. maybe this one, okay, where you can okay. interact. See the panel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you we can save this in a slot too. So now if mm -hmm. I click a uh, control one, I jump directly to the first slot control one and control two, okay. I can come here. Okay. Right. I, in addition, this, what, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. This you can also do from the camera icon on the bottom, right? Yes. Yeah. So you from can here, you can you click, click here. Okay. Here. In addition, okay. what you can do is that you can pin a camera. Mm -hmm. So let's say okay. I want to do a, a pseudo vision application. So I, I'm gonna okay. do something. So when the uh, when like the box, color detection or yeah, color detection. Mm -hmm. When the product comes here, I want to do take a picture and do color detection. So we can now okay. save this as a third slot. Okay, mm -hmm. we go back okay. to a slot one, and now we can pin the third slot. In the bottom corner. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I need to hide you. So, so here we can see what's okay. going on from that perspective. And the cool thing okay. is that this this may be useful in a bigger system to see what's happening okay. in another place. 
But right. in this case, we added just temporary to mm -hmm. to allow this uh, kind of uh, vision okay. system applications. That you can do two okay. things: you can you can take a screenshot, screenshot. yeah, oh, okay. or you can start recording a video. Yeah, wow. and what will happen is that it will open a location which is actually in the oh, cool. uh, an, an, uh, a URL. Mm -hmm. uh, but and you can refresh it to get the latest picture uh, and so on. Okay. But uh, in addition, if you go to the let me let me open the browser uh, or okay. the file explorer. If you go to mm -hmm. the Simumatic uh, folder included in mm -hmm. C users your username and then the okay. Simumatic folder, you will see here that okay. there is a folder cameras. called cameras. Wow, okay. And this is the one that here we could see. You see how. Wow. We are seeing it's the camera. Live? Yeah. Yeah, if cool. it, it refresh. So let's see oh, if, if I can. Yeah, I, I'm gonna stop the box in that place, like that. Okay. Now we could open and you will see mm -hmm. it here. So that's the latest pic picture. Nice. And it's taking one picture every second. So imagine okay. if you stop it with the PLC, you, the PLC could send uh, okay. A signal to a I don't know a script or whatever running open right, open right. CV doing the right. color reflection and then sending back okay. to the PLC. This is a red box Ooh. and this is what I, something I want to show because we did it in um we did a project like that uh, okay. recently. So it could be it yeah, could my, be something. One yeah. question. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Does it always rename that photo, or can you have multiple yeah. photos as well? No, so far in this uh, beta feature, we are mm -hmm. writing, overwriting writing the file. Overwriting. Yeah, so depending okay. which is the name of the of okay. the the save view. View. Uh, yeah. Save view. So it's overwriting. Yeah. Okay. So in the next webinar, we're gonna see how yeah. we can detect the color using OpenCV. For image? example, yeah, something like that. Uh, oh, we can okay. we can try oh. to do something like that. Yeah. Then maybe we can bring a robot and pick different yeah. color objects in different places. Mm -hmm. We can use the same system, add a robot to it, and mm -hmm. then we'll yeah. speak in place. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. And which PLC we're gonna use next time? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> we have some of <laughs> some that we haven't used. We have the Jaskawa PLC. I think we haven't used it yet. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Let's this let's think about that. Yeah, if like, if someone in the audience it. has uh, uh, is looking for a suggestion, yeah. yeah, you can tell us. We okay. can try. Yeah, and then we we'll look for that. Cool. Very nice. I'm looking forward yeah. to the next one. Super yeah, interesting. Yeah, me too. Good. <laughs> but then uh, let me bring you back, Rajbir. Now. Yeah, so, okay. uh, yeah, I think we it was oh, almost one hour today again. So, that was, yeah, yeah cool, yeah. very yeah. nice. So, yeah, stay tuned to our LinkedIn page for yeah. our next webinar notification, or you can just check our Instagram as well where you have all yeah. the notification. Yeah, subscribe to the channel as well because... We will be we'll really having <laughs> having doing we will be doing these webinars uh, at least once a right. month, right? Yeah, and, and you uh, can check out Simomatic thirty days trial version for free if yeah. you haven't used it yet. And if you want to use it provisionally, you can talk to us, book us a demo, and we can show you what more exciting things you can do with Simomatic. Yeah. yeah, so all that from the website Simomatic dot com. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, nice to see you as always. It was a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> as well. See you, see you Thanks. soon, everyone. See you next time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have see a nice day, time. everyone. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. bye. bye.